The psychodynamic approach to personality was founded by the well-known Austrian physician and psychologist Sigmund Freud. Psychoanalysts believe that personality is controlled by our subconscious thoughts, from experiences we cannot even consciously remember. This video will introduce Freud and his ideas about personality. Freud was born in Moravia, but moved to Vienna when he was four, where he was to live and practice as a medical doctor and psychoanalyst. Although many of his ideas have been rejected in recent years, his work has had a profound and lasting effect in the field of psychology. His approach to treating patients with mental illness included the following techniques, talking, hypnosis, and free association. In this latter technique, patients would be told a word and they were asked to respond with other words very quickly. The purpose of this technique was to get at the thoughts and feelings that patients were not even aware of. During these sessions, he noticed patients would become emotional and afterward would show a reduction of symptoms. From this, he concluded all personality problems could be related to subconscious thoughts. Freud suggested that we have three levels of awareness that control our behavior and personality. His view of the mind can be imagined like an iceberg. The majority of our behaviors are controlled by the larger part of the mind, the unconscious. In the first level, the conscious mind, we are paying attention to things at the moment. It includes our current thinking processes and objects of attention and is a very large part of our current awareness. The pre-conscious mind includes those things of which we are aware but where we are not paying attention. We can choose to pay attention to these things and deliberately bring them into our conscious mind. Uh, we can control our awareness to a certain extent. The larger part of our mind is the unconscious level. And in here, the processes and content are really out of our direct reach. The unconscious mind, therefore, thinks and acts independently from our conscious. In Freud's theory of personality, he includes three components, the id, the ego, and the superego. The id operates in what has become known as the pleasure principle. It is where our basic wants and desires come from. The ego is part of our conscience that tries to get rid or get the id what it wants. The superego is like the conscious that is concerned about social conventions and following rules. The ego has to maintain the balance between the id who wants everything no matter what, and the superego that is always making one feel guilty for wanting it. Freud believed that whenever the mind had trouble reconciling the needs of these three parts, psychological problems could occur. He suggested that when the ego cannot satisfy the desires of the id, it used defense mechanisms. He defines these mechanisms as unconscious psychological strategies used to cope with anxiety and maintain a positive self-worth. Freud listed a number of these mechanisms and other psychologists, including his daughter Anna, have added to the initial list. Imagine the following situation. You do not like your teacher and you're angry with him. You might use these unconscious strategies in dealing with your situation. In reaction formation, you would turn the feeling into its opposite and you would tell your friends, oh, oh, I think he's really great. In suppression, you'd be vaguely aware of your thought, but you'd try to hide it. And you might tell yourself, I'm just gonna try to be nice to him. In denial, you completely reject the thought or feeling. And you might say, oh, I'm not angry with him. Rationalization is where you would come up with various explanations to justify the situation. Oh, he's just being critical because he's trying to help us do our best. Or in displacement, you could redirect your feelings to another target. I hate that class. Another type of rationalization is intellectualization. This is where you would take an objective and perhaps intellectual view of things. In isolation of affect, you think the feeling, but you really don't let it affect it and you do not feel it. And you might tell your friends, well, I guess I'm kind of angry with him. Ah, sort of. Regression is where you would revert to an old, usually immature behavior to ventilate your feeling. Hey, let's just shoot spitballs at everybody. In sublimation, you redirect the feeling into a socially more productive activity. You might write a poem or paint a painting about anger. In projection, you might think that someone else has your thought or feeling. And you might tell all your friends, that teacher hates me. 
Are all these mechanisms negative? No, some of them can be quite a useful way to deal with your situation. In Freud's theory of developing personality, he stated that children go through a series of stages related to pleasure seeking. These are the oral, anal, phallic, latent, and genital stages. We will discuss these further at a later date. Freud suggested if one did not pass through each of these stages appropriately and became fixated or stuck in one stage, it could cause problems and influence your behavior and personality later. Some of these ideas Freud even himself reconsidered, and many are still often criticized today. However, with this theory, Freud suggested that one's personality is fixed by the end of childhood, and you really can't change it after that. We will continue to learn about Freud's ideas in depth in our Theory of Personality book.